What's the latest on the Houston Astros pursuit of Blake Snell? JP France looked good. Although the Astros lost, we do have some highlights. I wanted you to see JP France. We'll hear about and we'll hear from Joe Espada and we will hear from Hunter Brown as well. We'll talk about the spring breakout game that's coming up on Sunday morning on this edition of Locked on Astros. Jainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric, the man, Heisman, and Brett, H-Town wheelhouse Chansey. Hey there, and welcome into a special Saturday night edition. I figured I'd sit down and talk about a couple things with Blake Snell, because I know there was some speculation as to what has been going on or what is being said or what's not being said um i'm h john wheelhouse you can find me at h john wheelhouse on x instagram and tiktok you can find me at stros 411 on um x instagram and facebook always positive always stros you can find the show at locked on astros on x instagram tiktok you can find us on i mean pretty much anywhere um i know we have a discord server eric is in there more than i am but you can check us out there so make us your team every single day and make sure that you go to FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. That's right. Make every moment more. New customers join today. You'll get $200 in bonus bets with your first $5 bet or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. All right. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for tuning in, man. 53 of y'all. Um, how are y'all doing? Now, I really wish that I could come on here and talk about um, what the Astros are doing and regards to signing Blake Snell but as it stands right now the the talks were ramping up and they were actually moving forward but there is seems to be some distance between the Astros and Blake Snell's camp as far as money now if you are on X you will see people opining about specific amounts of money but none of that stuff is truly public if you hear public numbers I don't know that I would um, put too much stock in that. But the fact is that, um, you know, some people are asking, is Blake Snell or is Scott Boris doing this to leverage another deal elsewhere? I don't think he goes to the Yankees. Um, the Giants, I think, are the only team really in play. But look, Jose Arquiti, he went back to Houston. He got to the facility this morning and his elbow was still sore. And so that right there would make you think that the Houston Astros would go after someone like Blake Snell. Now, how much are they willing to go? Um, No, um, bust a beast 0808. I do not think they should go after Trevor Bauer. I am not on the Trevor Bauer train. I never have been. I never will be. Call it what it is. For me, it's more of a locker room and Um, clubhouse culture issue than anything else. I don't know about his legal stuff. I haven't researched it. I don't care to. It's none of my business. Whether he's falsely accused or not, I don't care about that. I don't want his personality near the players in this clubhouse. We have way too high caliber players to bring in someone like that. The trash can shoes, I can't get over it. The trash throws, I can't get over it. I know he may have said that he would pitch for the Astros. Of course he would. He would pitch for anybody right now. He would pitch for league minimum. He wants to play baseball again. And I don't begrudge him if he if he's going to play somewhere, just not with the Houston Astros. And that's all I'll say about that. Um, I, I'm i hearing that Blake Snell's asking for $35 million. I don't know that to be true. Um, Mr. Corona says uh, the 2023 NL Cy Young might miss the start of the season due to overpricing. Due to his, his agent, yes, overpricing. Um, If you look at his career stats, he's had two really solid years in his two Cy Young years. And the other years have not, they've not been bad, but they've not been Cy Young years. Well, I mean, you can make the argument, well, not every pitcher throws a Cy Young year, right? 35 million, that is not cheap for Blake Snell. I think that's either right at where he should be. Or a little above, actually. I think Blake Snell's a 30 to 35 million guy, if I'm being honest. But that's my evaluation. I'm sure you all have different um, opinions on that. But 
right now, as it stands, Blake Snell has not signed with anybody. Now, I don't know of any talks of with any other team. So, again, like I mentioned with Eric, um, the last time we had a show together, the Astros are going to have to meet Snell where he's at to get this deal done. Like with Bregman, the Astros will set the bar. Bregman's going to have to meet them where they're at. So it's two different scenarios. Um, could we afford him if we don't trade for, if we didn't, um, we're not even paying that much for Verlander, to be honest with you. It's not, I mean, look, if you get Snell, you can work out a deal where it doesn't even affect the signing of either Tucker or Bregman or both. I mean, it, it really doesn't. Um, Mr. Cron is asking, have the Astros, they have never been, I've never heard. And I talked to various people throughout the industry and, you know, sometimes I hear things, sometimes I don't, but I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have not heard anything. I have not seen anybody that would consider themselves an insider have heard anything with Montgomery. Now, if you look at Montgomery's career, it's good, but he's cheaper. But to get him here on a three or four year deal, I, I don't know. I think the diminishing returns would show up faster than for Snell. You know, I think there might be an opt-out issue. Like, maybe he wants to opt out sooner. Um, the Astros probably want him for a third year. Um, but, you know, I am not 100%. <laughs> look, um, Injured Cold said, look, we got to get Snell. Um, and then the Storm Bum says Astros getting on Montgomery would be straight out of the blue. You know, it would be. Um, I would love for Jordan Montgomery to be in an Astros uniform just to receive the Rangers ring in a Nationals uniform. That would be funny. Um, so how many pitchers do we have now? Well, let's let's look at let's take a look at our at our roster and um you know see see who we have. When you're talking as far as starting pitching, you have Fromber Valdez, Christian Javier, Hunter Brown, JP France, Ronel Blanco right now. That's 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 five. OK, um, and then you have Brandon Belak, who could be a six starter. Um, that's why I think if they're wanting to go with the six man rotation, they're really going to have to do this because. It sounds like Jose Arquiti is probably not going to be back anytime soon. Um, he has a sore elbow and then it's been reported. Ari Alexander from Channel 2 said sources it, from the team confirmed to him that he had forearm tightness. When you have forearm tightness, that typically is a symptom of a Tommy John issue, which if that's the case, then Arkady would be down for the year. But I don't know. I'm merely speculating. I have no inside information on that. But JP France is on schedule. So with that, um, I, I want to play y'all a clip, just a minute and 35 seconds of what JP France said about his outing today. Let's watch. You're good out there. How'd it go for you? Yeah, everything felt really good, man. Um, like I was saying earlier, the biggest thing for me was kind of just execution with pitches. Um, but main focus was just feeling good. Um, everything felt good. That's They wanted me to get three ups. Um, fortunately, the first inning was a little longish. I had a walk and a couple battles and uh, um, broken bad single from Pete. But no, that's why they took me out in the second inning because they wanted me to get that third up. Uh, to just see how the, the arm responded from that. But, no, everything felt really good. Um, it was a good step in the right direction. And what are your hopes for the next start? A little more, uh, another inning or 20 more pitches? Or what's the... Yeah, roughly uh, four innings. I would assume probably 65-ish pitches somewhere in there. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as for me, just kind of filling the zone up just a little more. I was kind of found myself nibbling on corners, trying to be too perfect, and... When you try to be too perfect in this game, it'll it'll bite you. Having to pick up the slack for another starter, I don't know if that's kind of realistic talk because you have to kind of handle your own stuff first. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's it. There's always going to be with any club, you're going to have unfortunately guys get hurt and guys who get brought up in a situation for like for me last year, and you just got to make sure you whoever gets put in that situation that you just put an exclamation point on it and just take advantage of the opportunity. 
Yeah, so there you go. Um, JP France, you know, saying that basically he believes he's on track to go ahead and um, be inserted into the starting rotation. And that is a good sign. Now, um, in today's game, I'm going to show you some of the highlights a little bit later. But uh, it it wasn't a great game for the Houston Astros today. They didn't get the uh, – they only got uh, one hit. Yeah, they were one hit today. <laughs> John Singleton, who we've been kind of down on a little bit lately. But pitching wise, uh, Brian Abreu, uh, wow he he had a he had a horrid two thirds of an inning. He gave up two hits, four runs, all earned, and two walks. He's got a nine eighty two ERA in spring training. But we're not so we're not so much worried about that as I haven't heard any concerns about about Brian Abreu not not being ready or or not looking like himself. I mean these these things are going to happen. But you know for for J P Francis stat line two and one thirds innings, four hits, one run one walk, four strikeouts, one home run. So it is just like one of these things where JP France was asked and we caught the back end of that. JP France was asked um, with Urquidy possibly going down, does that put more pressure on you as a starter? And he had addressed that. And I'm going to uh, address that here um, in a second after we talk about our sponsor FanDuel. Let me find, there we go. Hey everybody, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. That's right, FanDuel is a is the number one sports book in America. Don't worry about busted brackets. You can say goodbye to those. Um, you can bet on every game of the tournament. If you were watching that game today, wow, the Cougars got just crushed by the Iowa State Cyclones. They've only lost, they've lost two games to them and they were held to 25 points at the half both times. So let's hope that they don't meet the Cyclones again in the tournament. But whether you're going for the big upset, the number one seed, it's time to go dancing. America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $200 in bets and in, uh, in bonus bets with your first $5 bet that wins. That's right. 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You even pick who's going to win it all. You can do that. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops. And excuse me, until they cut down the nets. Hey guys, and make sure y'all check out Locked On Sports Today. Um, Locked On Sports Today has all your sports coverage and coming up here pretty soon. I'm um, here in a few days. You'll have the AOS preview where Eric sat down with the other host of the um AOS um the other AOS locked on hosts and they talked about who will win and the overall favorite was the Houston Astros to win this division. Um so okay so JP France was saying look if I put more pressure on myself as a pitcher because someone else goes down and I put more pressure on myself thinking that I have to do more then you know what I'm going to I'm going to try to do more than I need to do and so at, at, at the end of the day, guys like J.P. France are not worried about it. So, hey, let's let's listen to what um, Joe Espada had to say in our Yo Joe segment. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. Joe Espada, Yo Joe. For his debut, what were your thoughts about his? Uh, yeah, you know, well, we checked that box of of health, and 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 he looked healthy. Um, pitched himself out of some trouble there in the first, and. Um, you know, we were able to get him back out there in the third to get his pitches in there. So I thought it was a good outing. And what's up for him next? A little extended outing? Yeah, hopefully he hopefully bounces back well tomorrow and we hear some good news and then get him back out there and get him up to 60, 70, 65 pitches. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, Joe Espada, our skipper, is encouraged by what he saw with J.P. France, and that's what you want to hear. Um, we were talking a couple weeks ago about how we're, we're going into the season healthy. <laughs> And yes, Framber Valdez is the opening day starter for a third season in a row. That's right. Framber Valdez is making his third opening day start. And as he should, um, Framber Valdez, um, uh, Christian Javier, I, I would assume that the third spot would belong to Hunter Brown. And then you would probably have JP France. And I assume Ronel Blanco would be that fifth spot. And, and that's why I think it is important that, um, Jim Crane really wants Blake Snell. I would not be surprised if something happened. If y'all know anything about now, I'm going to draw a parallel here, but I'm not saying the two situations are the same, but they can have the same ending. 
and tell me, you know, Mr. Corona, Mr. Richard, Sammy, Susan, um, everybody else who's here. I don't, you don't have actual names. You, you know, who's here watching and listening. And if you're in the chat, tell me if you can see this parallel. Okay. Nobody in the Astros organization really thought the Justin Verlander deal was going to get done in 2017. Okay. And it happened literally with like seconds on the clock. Nobody thought the Josh Hader thing. Nobody even had that on their radar. Is there a chance? What do you think? Is there a chance that Jim Crane looks at his pitching staff, knows that now Urquidy's possibly down, that Garcia and McCullers will probably be relegated to the pin, that do you think that there will be a last minute that Blake Snell and the Astros come to terms? like these last two big signings when it comes to pitching Josh Hader and Justin Verlander. What do y'all think? Um, Linda says it's possible. I mean, yeah, I know it's possible, but I mean, do y'all think it's probable? I mean, I know everybody's already kind of counted us out. People are like, yeah, they're, they're far apart with money, but the bottom line is where's Blake, where's Blake Snell going to go where he's going to have a chance to win. And what has he not been able to do? win there you go i like that oscar's like 50 50 chance i guess he can i guess it, it can happen or not happen there you go there's the odds thank you um and uh mr cron is saying uh it is very likely we're shot i believe yes um good chance wouldn't bet against it look i'm just trying to give us food for thought because we really need to do something and I, I hate that Arkady is down. I was really hoping Arkady would come in and solidify his spot and either create a viability for him to be on this team for the next few years or be someone that the Astros could realistically trade at the trade deadline, not really lose anything, and where they would have five or six other guys that were healthy, and that just isn't playing out the way um, that they are. Um <laughs> Someone says, I keep asking my mom to go to the Astros versus Dodgers and boo the heck out of them. <laughs> there you go. Um, I think it happens, but it will probably take longer than we want to do to money. That is correct. Mr. Corona says, I want Snell just to get him away from the Yankees. Yeah, look, if he turned down the Yankees the first time, I don't think he's going to turn down the Yankees a second time. And hey, I don't know if you know this. The Yankees have a kid named Spencer Jones at two home runs today in their spring breakout game. Holy crap. This kid, they're calling him the left-handed judge. He's six foot six. He's an absolute animal. All right. So what I'm going to do for the next, um, I'm going to show these highlights. These highlights from today's game will be about four minutes long. Um, and y'all can comment and talk. I, I can comment and chat with y'all as we watch these, but let's see the highlights. Um, I'll try to grab highlights next time we have a more exciting game, but let's watch JP France on the mound. That's, really the key part of this.
Now, I don't know if y'all can hear me, but um, Ryan Presley actually uh, pitched decently today. And after this, Brian Abreu uh, came in there and just, like, much spelled. That way, make it a little less boring here. Now, here's Chaz McCormick. I think he is a sack RBI. I can't remember if to hit the ball well. Yeah, we got a sack. Why? There we go. That was Willie Wagner. We should call him Willie the Kid. Here's a Bray U. Ooh. Yeah, that that pitch didn't even. That was. I think anybody could have played in that ball. Good lord. It's a bad pitch. A lot of Mets fans. You notice that? That's crazy. There you go. You have to do that next time. Sorry, I. Some of that. I. I wonder how they picked the video. Of course, I know today's game wasn't super eventful, but um, there you go. I thought y'all might like that. And and then um, Snell is probably going to sign when I'm at school. Yeah. Look, Snell. Look, Snell will probably sign tomorrow during the day when we can't break into a show, and I'll be really, really, really upset at that if I do. Um, yeah, I don't know if he's the GOAT, um, but he he does tend to get, get uh, you know, a lot of information. I just, I think sometimes, um, you're talking about the guy on, um, on X. I do think um, sometimes, look, you can literally have information on something that's happening and it completely change in a matter of minutes. Um, so the I, I guess what was it? Was it was it John Morosi who got roasted for some big free agency? Like he he made some claim about I forget which one it was. Y'all can y'all can help me with this, but he got completely trashed because he oh, it was the Otani thing. And someone was tipping them off that Otani was doing all this stuff flying to Toronto. And they were going along with what people said. But I, I know of situations where I've been told, hey, this is, this is happening. This is going to happen. And then it doesn't happen. And I'll check back and they'll say, look, it was, it was about to go through. And then this happened or that happened. Um, you know, the Bryce Harper coming to Houston was almost a thing. And it was nixed last minute by the owner of the Nationals. And, and so we try to give you pertinent information, stuff that is real. The bottom line is this. Information that is leaked, that doesn't come from main media sources like guys we trust, the Passans, Chandler Rome, um, Ken Rosenthal, all all those, you know, the men and women that are kind of the leaders in sports journalism. If it doesn't come from them, a lot of times you have to take what you hear with a grain of salt. I did hear that there were some things being done or there was not an agreement in place but that pretty much all they had to do was come together on some financials and that the Astros were going to sign Snell. And then an hour later, I hear they're super far apart. And then I hear they're still negotiating. And so it changes. And you got to understand that sometimes agents put out interference. Sometimes information out there isn't always what it, what it seems. Um, you know, right. And he, he has been right a lot of times, but, my contention with that whole situation is if you have a trusted source, let's just take for me, if I have a trusted source and they're like, I'm trusting you with this and they give me that information, it's not my job to be the newsbreaker because I'm taking private information and I'm sharing it with the world. And it, it comes across as someone, it would come across as me trying to trump the cards of the big guys. And that wouldn't be seen well. I mean, you want to you want to blacklist yourself or blackball yourself in the in the media industry. Try to play them. You got to do you, and you got to do it honestly. 
And that's why at this show, if I say something, it's because I'm confident in what's happening, but it's also not anything that you probably haven't heard already in the public. Okay. Um, when you have privileged sources, when you have people that share with you information that the public doesn't necessarily know, you don't take liberty to go to Twitter or X or wherever and share that information because eventually that source will dry up because the team, the Astros are tight lit team and they will pull the plug on that and they will find out and they will do their research. They'll know who's leaking information. Jim Crane's a billionaire for a reason. Um, they have been correct, but the information that he's giving is coming from somewhere within the organization. And if that's ever found out by the Houston Astros, then I promise you that that information will stop flowing to him. And that's the risk he runs. That's the risk anybody runs. And so it doesn't matter what people say unless it comes from a confirmed media source. And until it is confirmed, that's why we try to do the responsible thing and not report speculative things. Now, we will say we have heard. We will say this is being talked about, but we will never use it as definitive. And so that's my only concern. Look, hey, any of y'all can do what you want. If you got sources, if you know people, you can go and you can tweet and you can live the way you want to live and 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 handle um, information. I know for me, I'm not ever going to take away the ability to maybe know some inside information and share that with the world just so I can be the guy who broke the news because that right there will get you again. It'll put you on a, on a bad list. It'll, I mean, and if you ever want to advance in media, people are going to remember that. And so you've got to do it with honor and respect. That's why I'm like always positive, always strose. I'm not perfect. I'm not some 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 white knight riding in on a horse to to save everybody, but I can tell you that I think and I and I opine on everything that I do and I report for this show, and I do my best to give y'all the truth, and I do my best to give y'all what I think y'all need to hear. So before I need to wrap it up, because I got to wrap it up in the next three minutes, and I see we got 138 of y'all. I hope we have 138 likes. The spring breakout game is Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. The three featured Astros on the logo are Spencer Arigetti, um, Jacob Melton, and Luis Baez. Um, Joy Loperfito, I believe, will be in that game, too. And then you have um, Chase Davis, Thomas, sorry, um, Thomas Saji, I can't say his name, and Victor Scott Jr. from the Cardinals. It is the top prospects from both teams playing against each other. And so that should be a fun game. Yeah, Loperfito will be there. Baez, Corona, Desenzo, Wagner. I mean, right here. Um, the the these are all the guys that will be on this spring breakout team. Let's see if they give me the full roster in a list form. No, they don't. Well, why why would they? oh here we go? Um Arigetti, Blue Ball, Fleury, Bloss, Cuba, Noor, Taylor, Yola, um, Dombrowski, um, Santa and Gilfoyle for the pitchers, catchers, Palma, Garcia, Price, um, infielders, Matthews, Desenzo, Wagner, Luciano, Diaz, and Hernandez, outfielders, Melton, Baez, Luperfito, Cole, Corona, Barber, Fisher, and Kenny Gomez. I'm excited to see this. I'm excited to see these guys um, perform on the big stage together. It's going to be fun. I'm probably going to have to record it because we may be hitting up church and that's around church time. So, um, look to wrap up the Blake Snell thing, Blake Snell can want all the money in the world, but if nobody's willing to pay it, then that's, you're not worth that. Okay. It, it's just like anything. Um, it's just like, you know, my baseball cards. I mean, <laughs> I'll kind of show you all this. Um, so tops now does this, uh, they commemorate big games. So Jose Altuve's first career cycle, I pulled a two of five. It's an autograph, and look at the piece of the base that's in there. It's the MLB logo. Now, this, this card, de depends on what people think it's worth, 
was 180 out the door, but it's worth a lot more than that. I can sit here and say this card's worth ten thousand dollars, but if someone's only willing to pay two thousand, it's not worth ten thousand. If Blake Snell thinks he's worth thirty five, but no, that but people are only willing to pay thirty two. Sorry, Blake, you're not worth thirty five. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. Y'all have a good one. Thank y'all for stopping by the special late night of Locked On Astros. It's been fun. Look, no matter if Blake Snell comes here or not, it doesn't matter why, because we are the Houston Astros, and we're going to charge back to the World Series in 2024. Y'all have a good one, and I am out.